What's up, legends? Today's episode is with the one and only Michael Chernow. I'm gonna call him Chef Entrepreneur because he's just able to kill everything in business and love it. Uh, and today we did a turkey sweet potato lasagna with two types of cheeses, all in the phenomenal vein of his epic Italian meatball shop and because he requested it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> My brother. How are you, man? <laughs> did you just, was that like an Aussie? I did. Yeah, it, was just it like... came out of nowhere, man. <laughs> it came out of nowhere. Mark Wichero dropping Australian slang. I love it. I'm already having a good positive influence on you. Hey. My man, thank you. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, can I just say on a personal level, I reckon, I reckon, so I've been in this city for almost four years. I've known about you and what you've done for probably seven um, but I think it's just because of who you are as an individual and how we relate that I've always, you know, followed you and you know what you've done. And I'm very blessed to now call you a mate, which is an Aussie thing. It's almost like a, a brother, I guess, what you call over here, right? But I just want to say thank you so much for being on the show today, Michael Chernow. Welcome to the Studio Kitchen, dude. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much for that incredibly generous intro. Uh, <laughs> As you know, I feel the same way about you, man. I mean, I think you and I have a, a lot of similarities, just the way we live our lives. Um, not trying to uh, do things for recognition, but just being who we are. And, um, and ultimately, authenticity, I believe, brings greatness, right? And so, I appreciate it, man. I, um, I love what you do. I'm really impressed with what you've created. And uh, I'm honored to be here. Appreciate it, bro. Well, we got a lot of fun times ahead. Let's talk for the next, uh, you know, thirty or so minutes about some of the stuff that you've done, um, what inspires me, and what a lot of people are inspired by, and, and what you're going to be doing. So, I want to start off by saying that for me, and I think I don't know, a lot of listeners would know, meatball shop. But before the meatball shop, there was culinary school. Um, I get asked a lot of time about you know culinary school. And for me, it was my family that got me into doing things because I didn't go to culinary school. So what was your upbringing like? You know, what got you to becoming, you know, this brand building legend uh, of not just Meatball Shop, but Seymour's as well. But what, what started you in, in this world of culinary, um, food, cuisine, chefing, whatever you want to call it? Well, I mean, I think if I break it down to the bare, to the basics, to the root of where it all began, um, I grew up in New York City. I grew up in Manhattan. Uh, and uh, my folks didn't have a ton of money and I went to a big public school and uh, I was exposed to a lot of things at a young age and I wanted things I wanted to uh, I was I was a, always a very curious kid I was always uh, a bit of an explorer for whatever reason I loved the hunt at a very young age and so I wanted a job um, and the only place that would hire me at 12 years old <laughs> was, uh, was a restaurant. Um, and so somewhere between my 12th and 13th birthday, I, uh, I, w I, I got a job as a delivery boy in a vegan restaurant on the Upper East Side, believe it or not. It's still there. It's called the Candle Cafe. <laughs> Candle Cafe. Yeah. How about that? Vegan. How long ago is this? Because you're still young. 37? 38. 38. 38. So this was... Uh, this was 25 years ago. Ahead of the times. Yeah, yeah, and there, and there, there, I was introduced to and fell in love with kale. Uh, that was my first sort of introduction to kale. They were doing kale before kale was a thing. Sure. Um, I ate an enormous amount of it. Um, but you know, interestingly enough, if you ask my mother, uh, as early as I can remember, uh, produce was my jam. Fruit and vegetables by far and away more so than, than protein. Um, so I always loved fruit and vegetables. I actually didn't really start eating meat um, until I was probably 18. I really, I just was like a big vegetable person. Salads, roasted vegetables, this is what I like to eat. Anyway, so I started, I started my sort of culinary uh, exploration um, and journey at 13 years old. I was delivering food for Candle Cafe, uh, dishwashing, they'd let me in the kitchen every now and then to prep food. Um, but ultimately what I found out being in that environment was that I loved people. Uh, and I've always loved people. And uh, when I got a job in a restaurant, I was able to be with more people, older people, and I felt like I'd arrived. And so I just followed my heart, you know, and I followed what, um, what sort of fell into my lap as a, 
an opportunity to put some cash in my pocket um, became my lifelong passion in people and food. And so, you know, I, 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 I have never not had a job in a restaurant from the very day I got hired at Candle Cafe to this very day right now. Um, I've been a rec restaurant technician now, luckily, you know, and, and I've been blessed to, to open up a few businesses that have, that have given me an opportunity to really spread my wings and, and, uh, and work with a ton of amazing people that I call uh, crew members today at both Meatball Shop and Seymour's. Um, but yeah, man, I think, I think uh, ultimately food and people have become the cornerstones of my life. And that doesn't necessarily only mean in business, right? I mean, I, I think food is the sort of global uh, magnet for bringing people together. It, it is the one thing that in any culture um, you want to see how people actually communicate. You go to the dinner table uh, and, that's, and, that's, uh, and that's beautiful. Man, yeah, that is that is beautiful. I think something we can all phenomenally appreciate from what you just said is, I think, and I take from it is the gratitude you had from your family to just even simple things in that produce to the fact you call them crew members. They're not your employees. They are crew members, and that's something that it takes a very special person to recognise that family. Um, so my next question is, how much? How much did your family have an impact on, on these habits and these, these well, not habits, this philosophy, this, this way of life? So, you know, it's really interesting. I actually had, my upbringing was really um, intense. Sure. Uh, I, had a, I had a father who is no longer with us, but my dad was a really, um, my dad was an entrepreneur. Um, he, was, uh, he, was, he was, by trade, he was an electrician and a lighting designer, but in his heart, he was an entrepreneur. My relationship with him was terrible, unfortunately, um, but he taught me a number of things that have sort of made the man I am today um, that I'm passing on to my sons. And, uh, you know, but I didn't come from a real culinary household. I didn't come from a food home. Um, you know, we, we very rarely ate uh, together. Um, you know, I think I developed sort of my culinary interest and my food interest probably because I was looking for that connectivity that I didn't have at home elsewhere and so I think that that really sort of influenced why I am who I am today um, I know for certain that the business of business is relationships and the foundation of relationships is trust and I learned that through trial and error of course but um, you know not having such a great relationship with my father and uh, and and saying to myself as a kid and even to this day like I don't want that for anyone in my in my ethos in my arena um, I want to be a sort of an all-inclusive person um, I, I, I you know positivity is necessary for me uh, and and I think it's probably because and I don't blame anyone for for this but I think it was because it was a, it was a tough upbringing and uh, I had to, and I am a loving, caring person, um, and so, and that's innately who I am, you know. So, in, in order for me to sort of succeed in that, in that, in that way, I needed to find it elsewhere, and I found it in the restaurant world. Um, and so, I, I, I'm grateful for my family uh, for doing the best they possibly could. Uh, uh, and and had it had it been much better at home, you know, maybe I wouldn't have explored as hard as I as I did. Um, and and. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I think the influence that I had from my, from my upbringing was really, hey, get out there and create what you, what you want. Because not everybody's given what they want, you know. And that's truly amazing, the fact that you've taken, you know, something from, I wouldn't say necessarily just learned, but just experienced. Uh, and, and you knew that that's something you didn't necessarily want to have. So you, you, you took from what you learned, um, from an experiential situation, and you said, you know what? That's what I don't want. Um, and you have such compassion, man. Like, you really do. Like, I, there's like an energy about you all the time. It's just love, uh, determination and grit, but also that just compassion is something that just oozes from you. And it's so cool to see that, you know, we'll talk about it later, but you, you, you have a very beautiful uh, Instagram with your kids and your family that generally shows that. So um, that's something that I, you know, one day when I have kids want to be, 
inspired by and, and hopefully I you know, live up to that kind of, um, you know, family values of compassion that you show. So, uh, man, I just want to say that's, that's something that truly to me means a lot and I'm so, so blessed to have that. Thank you, man. I mean that. I mean that. So, speaking of family and food, obviously we know it brings us all together and that's a big part of the, the show that we have is actually creating dishes. So, today guys, we are going to be doing, man, you're, you're doing some bodybuilding at the moment. Yes, if you check out his Instagram, like I'm not, I'm a very fit person, right? So, you know, I'm not bad when it comes to taking my shirt off, but right now he's just making me look like <laughs> absolutely like I've never hit the gym before. So, check it out. We're going to do a, uh, we're going to do a turkey lasagna. Mm. We're going to do it with sweet potato. Uh, we're going to do two types of cheeses, ricotta and cottage, bringing back cottage cheese. So, just for you, my friend, I've already created the, the, the actual red sauce. Okay, but we're going to come back to you, but we're going to come back on how we actually created that just after hearing from one of our sponsors. Awesome. So Legend, one of my first experiences with New York dining was actually the meatball shop. Um, this is before I met you and I was essentially like, I walked in there and like, I looked at this awesome way to order, a, you know, your, your meal, uh, ticking boxes. I'm like, this is pretty, you know, engaging. And I had this epic meatball with uh, this pesto sauce on top and I was like, welcome to New York, straight up. <laughs> and now here I am creating this meat sauce for you. So pressure's on. So team, what we've done is just a really simple caramelized onion and garlic, added in some turkey mince. Mm. So we're doing turkey mince today, um, or turkey ground, ground turkey. You can substitute for beef. Uh, you can even do mushrooms as well. So ground mushrooms if you want to go vegetarian. And then we just added in miso paste, just for a little kick. Uh, tomato paste, San Marzano tomatoes, oregano and basil. All these ingredients will be in the show notes downstairs. Um, in this comment section right here. So from there, we've preheated our oven to 420 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're just gonna, Don, can you, uh, is this all right if I do it right here? Is that cool? Yep, happy days, all right. Mm. So we're just gonna spoon our mix in. Mm. Like, oh yeah. Mm. That looks good. So this is, uh, this is a much more what I like to do. I like to take my sauces really thick, man. Like I, I love to go, like, you know, you got like a, a red sauce is very thin and like mm. watery. I like concentrated. How totally. Do you feel, how do you feel about that? Man, I like a lumpy sauce. <laughs> lumpy. I must admit I'm learning about, about like red sauce, white sauce. So speaking of like in Australia, we don't call it white or red. We just call it like a tomato based sauce or something like that. So again, things I'm learning. Um, but guys, in here we just got ricotta and some uh, cottage cheese. What are your thoughts on cottage cheese, dude? You know, uh, cottage cheese reminds me of my mom. My mom was a big cottage cheeser growing up. Sure. Um, I love cottage cheese. Nice. I think cottage cheese has got a nice sort of. It, it's it's uh, the flavor profile is pretty mild, um, but it does the job. I just think it's got. I mean, do you have a lot of it now with your? What's your style? What, what is actually your style of eating right now with your um your bodybuilding? I know you're like keto and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, right now my I, I am truly eating. Uh, you wouldn't want to put it on the show. <laughs> Let's just put it down. Right? It's pretty. Right. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's, it's consistent with um, not a lot of salt, zero sauce, uh, chicken breast, broccoli. Asparagus. And how long out are you from your, your show? Four weeks. So it's four weeks out from your show. What are you at? Four percent? What do you think you're saying? Four percent body fat. Wow. So yeah. everyone, make sure you check out his gram. I'm doing it because, you know, I'm, I follow him, but then I almost like, I give him a like, but I get really like, oh my God, I just done a double this week as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's looking good. What does your, your wife and your family think of the bodybuilding thing? Is it? Well, you know, the truth is, is that I've only posted really one picture of where I'm at um, <laughs> right now True. in the bodybuilding game, just yeah. because uh, it's pretty intense and I've got veins going all through my torso. Yeah, it and, looks good, uh, dude. Like, to your credit, man, it's, it's awesome. I actually don't think it's not where I would like to be uh, physically, even though, like, it's, it's, an, it's sort of like a peak shape, uh, aesthetically cheek sure. shape. Um, but I like to be a little healthier. I like to be a little bit, like, a little bit more meat on my bones. Like fuller, you mean, or? Like I, I just feel like I like to look a little bigger. Okay. You know, and right now I'm like completely shredded to the bone, and so not complaining. It's an incredible challenge, but um, yeah, you know, I, I, and, and so my wife and kids, my wife and kids, they wanna, they hate me right now because <laughs> I'm like out to lunch, literally zoned out. I'm like. 
tired uh, as hell. I'm working out two to three hours a day, not eating a lot of food. My calorie intake is about 1,550 calories. Yeah, it's tough. Um, and you know, it's hard, but it's an incredible challenge and I'm always up for a challenge. You and I are running the marathon again, co-captains. Yeah, boy. I'm excited about City um, Harvest. It's gonna so, be awesome. We're gonna touch on City Harvest uh, a bit later, man. I wanna go back to this commitment thing. That, that's huge. That's massive. So before we touch on the commitment, guys, I've just laid on the sweet potato. Um, and you can just get that thin sliced, either through a mandolin um, or just using your knife skills. And then just the cottage cheese and the ricotta on top. And just put that in the oven, which has been preheated to 420 degrees Fahrenheit. So back to commitment, bro. Like that is something I think I'm taking from this whole experience watching you because I see it in everything that you do. And that's the same for business, the same for family, the same for life. So. You're doing this, this bodybuilding concept, uh, this whole phase, and I wanna know why. Like, what's the real reason you're doing it? Because I think that applies to a lot of things that you do in life, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, honestly, I still haven't been able to pinpoint why I um, push myself so hard. Sure. Um, I think, you know, I made a lot of decisions in my life that have, uh, ultimately put me in a place of, um, um, I enjoy the journey. The goals that I set, because I'm a goal-oriented guy, the goals that I set are lofty. The journeys for me make the goal, uh, the sort of destination awesome, but the, the journey is really what I enjoy. Um, and so, you know, similarly to creating a brand, right? I, I I enjoy creating a business. The vision that I get is is there way before I take the steps in order to, to get to the to the tangible experience. But so the vision that I have of myself on stage as a bodybuilder is it's like it, it, it it's it's something that you would think of as a child. You know, like I think it it sort of brings out this this youthful energy and excitement in me that like I can close my eyes and envision myself on a stage as a bodybuilder and then actually know that I have the the ability and the committal sort of um, ability to do it you know it's not like I, I honestly truly believe that I if I say something I do it and and I and I and I have confidence that that I'm not gonna fall off the beam and I think that that is probably if not the hardest thing to do as human beings um, up there, right? Like doing what you say you're gonna do is um, probably one of the, the hardest things to do in life, right? Like we, our word is our bond and, and sticking to our word is um, what makes sticking, me sticking to my word I believe is what defines who I am as a human. Um, and so that, that goes with business, that goes with re relationships, whether it's my relationship with my son, relationship with my wife, relationship with my business partner, relationship with my friends. Um, I, 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 I do what I say I'm gonna do, and that makes me fucking real. 100%. So let's go back to Meatball Shop hasn't even begun yet. Did you want it to be what you said it is? Like, did you go out there going, I'm gonna create Meatball Shop, and I'm gonna create it, and then I'm gonna create Seymour's. Like, talk me, Talk me through that. Like, what's that, that using that same concept of commitment? Was that what you were doing? Yeah, yeah. So I, 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 I changed my life at 23 years old. I got my shit together. I was a crazy maniac party kid for a long time. 23 years old, put a plug in the jug, stopped drinking, stopped partying, got serious with life. Made a plan to go to culinary school, graduate from culinary school, write a business plan, raise money for a restaurant, open a restaurant. At that point, at 24, when I had made the decision to plan out the next three, four years of my life, I didn't know Meatball Shop was actually going to be Meatball Shop, but I knew that I was going to have a restaurant. Went to culinary school, started thinking about concepts, graduated culinary school, got also a degree in restaurant management. Um, that took me about two years. Called my childhood best friend from you know growing up who actually got me my first job at the Candle Cafe, said, dude, you gotta get back to New York, we're gonna open up a restaurant together, we had always dreamed about doing it. He, it took him a year to get back, throughout that year I was planning and 
racking my brain and lifting up rocks and trying to see what made the most sense. Um, I worked in an Italian restaurant for a long time. I knew what people really enjoyed at that Italian restaurant. It was a very busy place. And so that restaurant called Frank Restaurant, it's in East Village, still there, an incredible place. Um, there's a dish on that menu that gave me the idea of the, for the meatball shop. And uh, one day, Dan and I were sitting down and, um, and I said, man, I think meatballs are what we should do. I think people love meatballs and no one's ever executed a meatball concept and there's so much, ver you can be so versatile with the menu because you can use any protein you want, you can use any vegetables that you want um, and you can give people an option to pick and choose and people love customizability. So came up with this idea for the meatball shop, had the vision in my head, I knew exactly where it needed to be, I wrote it down on paper and we executed it and it worked. Similarly. About three years into Meatball Shop, I knew that I am, I, I learned very quickly that creative entrepreneurship is what I enjoy most. Day-to-day -day operations, financials, not so much for me. Um, there are experts out there that can do a much better job. So about three years in, I started getting itchy. Um, seafood's something that I love. I've always loved seafood. And I started putting together the plan for Seymour's. And I knew what Seymour's was gonna be two years before it, was gonna, before it came to fruition. Um, and you know, I think I'm a creative dude that that's what I am. You know, I, I'm able to close my eyes and slowly put together, slowly slash quickly put together a vision for a brand. Um, and it is true to me. Um, and I use my experience from years of working in the industry, years of really looking to connect with people, understanding what people want, appreciating, listening. Um, listening to people is a big fucking thing. Like I listen to people. I don't wait to speak. Um, and I had to learn that obviously, but that was, you know, I, someone said to me back in the day, you know, a kid, you got to learn to listen and listen to learn. And, uh, and that stuck with me forever. Learn to listen, listen to learn. It's the only way we learn, right? We listen. And so that, 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 that's ultimately what I believe is my, my, my talent is to, understand and detect and locate what people really enjoy and sort of mesh that with my personal interests um, and uh, and boom there we go it's a concept yeah man but that's that's a lot like for example people talk about Charlie Street right it's like well first you have to create the concept then you've got to you know get your team together which then in turn probably change the concept slightly then get your financials in order, then find a location, then build it, then it opens, and then you gotta look after the baby. Now, it's one thing to have the foresight for what you kinda have in store, with like obviously room for flexibility, to actually execute on every single step of the way, and then make it grow, to then be able to do it again with another concept. Like, that takes more than, you know, I guess, natural talent and ability like you are just dedicated dude like you are dedicated to committing to something committed to you know running a marathon committed to making sure you finish this bodybuilding concept committed to making sure that whatever your next journey is if you commit to something that is something you're going to do and i think if if i'm like listening to this podcast right now and i'm going how often have i actually gone i'm going to do something and not done it like, how often am I going to join that gym? How often am I going to learn to cook this recipe? How often am I going to go on this trip and you don't do it? And I think that's something we can all listen to and go, you know what, if you actually just commit to yourself on the principles that you truly admire and execute, it's amazing what you can do. So, man, that's... You, you may have summed it up in a way, but I'm looking at it from a much broader picture. Like, there's a lot of things that go on there, but the most important thing is you committed and you executed. Well, one, one thing that I'll add to it that I think is super important to know is that, like, fear is, is uh, a real thing, right? Um, but when you break down fear, I also take that this is not advice that I created on my own, but fear, uh, fear sort of breaks down to false evidence appearing real, right? And that... F-E-A-R. That ultimately makes most people jump off and just pop, pop, pop off the beam. And so I use fear as a motivator. I happen to be a bit of a fearless guy. Um, fear motivates me. Fear gets me in the, in the groove. Um, I use fear as an asset. I don't allow fear to deter my 
um, my goal setting um, and my, my achieving. And so, you know, I, I, I know that it's a, a, I'm, I'm in the middle of creating a new brand, right? There's a world of things that I haven't thought of. But if I, if I focus on those things, then I'm not going to continue to move forward. Every single morning I wake up, I have a choice to get after it or not, period. I start every day fresh. Every single day because the past is history, man. I can't do anything to change it, whether it's positive or negative. There's nothing I can do to change it. Every single morning I wake up, I have an opportunity to crush. And I know that is true. And there's no one standing in my way aside from me. And so I bring my family, I bring my friends, um, and I try to put a smile on my face the whole way through. And if I continue to do that, man, I'll continue to do the things that I've been, I've been good at doing, you know? 100%, bro. 100%. It's, fear is something that motivates me, but what would you say to people who, who do have fear in all aspects of their life? Like, people come to me and say, oh, I'm, I want to do this, but I'm scared of, or, you know, what's your advice to those kind of, you know, people who have these potential opportunities or these creative ideas, but are scared? I mean, if you want me to be honest and real with you. Straight up, man. Stop being fucking lazy and stop using fear as an excuse, right? There's there's walkers and there's talkers, and if you fucking talk, you're gonna start to sound like the boy or the girl that cries wolf. It's about the walkers, the ones that don't talk as much but just do, um, because there's no reason why I can do it and you can't, or why he can do it and she can't, or why she can do it and he can't, or why she can do it and she can't. There's one thing that stands in the way, and it's you and your laziness and um, work is real you know it's real and fear is not a unique thing to anyone fear is universal so uh, get off your ass and stop talking you know that's what I would say and, and, when, and trust me people ask me all the time what you know what is it what's the thing and I said <laughs> I just do it you know I just do it Right? Like, I just go. And I don't let anyone stop me. Um, and I sacrifice at times, but, you know. Yeah. That's powerful. And true. It's true, man. Like, seriously. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's like, this doesn't just happen, you know? <laughs> like, 100%. But um, on that note, man, we'll, we'll uh, get to what's happening in your future, uh, both current and uh, exciting times of the marathon, just after a word from one of our sponsors, brother. Cool. So, Legend, speaking of walkers and those who do, we've got the marathon again coming up. We won't be walking. We won't be walking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll definitely not be walking. Um, so, for those who are unaware, both um, yeah, Michael and I ran the marathon last year, and I'm going to be able to, for once of my lifetime, have something against Chair now, and I beat him. He did. Uh, I beat him. He did. <laughs> Absolutely. It was so 100%. funny because the legends of City Harvest were actually having a little side bet. Everyone thought that you were going to win too. They did. <laughs> they did. And I remember when I finished, I remember when I finished, uh, someone texted me. I'm like, I'm on the floor dead. And someone texted me and was like, I think it was Jacqueline or, or even Gregory and said, uh, I, I was trying to find out where you were because I thought you'd be at the finish line <laughs> waiting for me. Um, but yeah, no, it's man, that, that was a really cool thing to start the race with you. And uh, I know you, you've, like you train like anything, you commit to something. And so I'm really looking forward to doing it this year. So I had, what was it? I got 3.30, I believe. You got 3.42, was that 340, right? I think it was 3.46. 3.46, cool, 345, awesome. So what are you going to go for this year? You gotta beat uh, three. You gotta beat my time. I'm so, gonna beat you. Yeah. Um, that's Step what, one. That's what I'm Step gonna one. Do. Okay. All right. Are you gonna put a parachute on my back or something? Or no, I'm just gonna beat you. Okay. Cool. I mean, if I see you towards the end of the race and yeah. you're in front of me, I'm. If yeah, you yeah. feel something hit you in the side <laughs> of the head, you know. Yeah. So this year, Chernow and I will be. Uh, we're very proud to be co-captains of City Harvest. Uh, so we're raising uh, funds. What's our target, man? What do we want to hit? Collectively. You know, I, I, I don't know. I think last year we all, we all the team raised over 150 grand. Yep. And I think we have 50 spots this year. So sure. I think that if we could say we break that record, that'd be awesome. Let's do I it. have a lofty goal of 25 grand I'm going to try to raise. Love that. Um, 
Yeah. I, I love that, man. I a hundred percent think we can do it. So let's let's commit to that. Speaking of commitment. You know, on the way to the on the way to the race I got a text from Gregory and he wanted to let me know that um, through the through the team that I captained last year, we fed six hundred thousand people with the money that we raised. So that's wow. like a real serious um, I mean, I, I, that got me through the race. I mean, I was just, you know, knowing that my two sons and my wife were waiting for me at the finish line and that 600,000 people were going to eat uh, was, I mean, pretty spectacular. That's really cool, dude. We, uh, yeah, like that is, that's like I think a part of what we do is why we do it. Like, you know, we're not in it for Michael Chernow. We're not in it for Dan Churchill. We want to have the ability to have some sort of, I almost say a legacy. We leave something behind, right? So the ability to work with City Harvest in, you know, feeding those who need it and also preventing um, wastage is an awesome, awesome organization Incredible. to be a part of. So we're very proud. Uh, and I'll put in the show notes a link where you can start donating because uh, we're going to start donating. Because um, we're going we're gonna to hit our goals. We're going to commit and hit our goals. Uh, and I'm going to still beat you at, uh, at the end of this. That's a goal, is it? You know, I wouldn't put it past you. I wouldn't put it past <laughs> So, speaking of, um, I guess, commitment and habits, you are, a, a, you are a creature of habit. I am. Let's, let's talk about just a morning routine. What is a morning routine? And, uh, maybe not when you're bodybuilding, but what's a morning routine in your typical um, you know, daily life? Uh, so, I typically wake up in the morning um, at around 5.30, somewhere between 5.30 and 5.45. Um, ideally before my wife and kids wake up, sure. uh, hit the bathroom, brush my teeth, wash my face. Then I hit my knees. Uh, I have a, a morning practice that I, uh, that I do or where I basically ask the universe to help me get through the day um, sober and uh, with positivity. Nice. Um, and uh, I have a breathing practice that I do. It's called the four seven eights. So I will breathe in for four counts, hold my breath at the top for seven counts, and slowly breathe out for eight counts. I'll do that 10 times. It just sort of sets the tone for the day for me. Just sort of like, I surrender right away. I ask for help. I get humble. I know that I'm not the one in charge. And uh, I do 25 push-ups, take a shower, go at breakfast, hug my wife and kids, typically take my son Finn to school, and that's 8 a.m. Uh, and then uh, I, I go about my day, um, and you know, uh, there are there are moments in time throughout the year where I'll I'll wake up at 5 a.m. and I'll get to the gym first thing in the morning, um, if 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 work is really busy. But I typically like to start my day like that. And is this structure something that helps set your mental state, or is there like you know doing 25 push-ups something that's like a I do that because I know it's great for my chest. You know, is there a more of a mental thing? Oh, that just gets the blood pumping. You know, 25 yeah. push-ups isn't going to do shit for my chest, gotcha. but, uh, but, but it, it, you know, like, I feel like I start really grounded. Yeah. I really, I start grounded, like literally my whole body's on the ground, sure. on the floor. Um, and, uh, I just sort of tune in to, to mother nature and, um, I'm sort of zenned out at that moment. And then I like to shock my body with like, you know, some push-ups. Um, and then, uh, Recently, I've been writing a, a gratitude list. I have a real, I can't believe I forgot my five-minute journal for you, but I, I've been writing in, in this five-minute journal, uh, which is really fantastic, um, and I do that in the morning, either before or after breakfast, depending on where the kids are, but it's, it's, a, it's a little little exercise that just makes me realize or forces me to appreciate the small things in life, um, and uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's so, my morning routine. That's a great morning routine. <laughs> Very, yeah. I love how structured it is. I appreciate that. So what's next for Churn now? What has he got going on? Um, so, you know, I just took a, uh, as, as expected, you know, I, I'm really great at creating brands, bringing brands to life, putting a team around them, creating the community and the culture, um, and then growing the brand to five restaurants and taking a step back. And so I just did that with Seymour's. Uh, as of January 1, 2019, I just took a big step back from day-to-day -day operations. My partner, Jay, is the CEO and captain of that ship now, and he's got an insane pedigree in building restaurant companies. Um, and so I've got another project that I'm uh, knee-deep in right now that uh, is going to be a little bit different. Um, but definitely, I think as we grow and evolve uh, as human beings, uh, everything that we sort of appreciate evolves with us, right? Um, and so 
that goes for aesthetics, that goes for our palate, that goes for um, our routines. And so Meatball Shop was my first thing, Seymour's was my, is my second thing, and this other project um, that uh, I really hope to launch in the fall of uh, 2019 um, is my third uh, that will be a big surprise uh, awesome. that I think is, uh, it, you know, the, the, the New York City market is ready for. Pumped. Well, if you've got any success on Maple Shop Seymour's, I'm pretty sure you're going to commit to that one. And yeah, my man, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for just hanging out with you, let alone seeing what you do. So uh, my final question is just, if you were a food, whether it be an ingredient, a dish, anything, what would you be? Hmm. If I was a food, an ingredient, a dish, anything, what would I be? <sighs> man, that is such a good question. I would probably be... What would, what would I be? Man, that's a stumper. It's good, isn't it? Um, is there something nostalgic that comes to mind? You know, there is. I'd probably, I'd probably be a big fat bowl of popper deli with lamb ragu. Oh, yeah, dude. That you know, because that's just like, like there's, 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 there's nothing better than <laughs> just like a big bowl with like freshly made popper deli pasta, awesome stewed lamb. Yeah. Tons of Parmesan cheese yeah. and just a big spoon and fork. I might have to make that because that just sounds epic. Everyone's like going, oh, yeah, right I now. love me some Papa <laughs> Deli. My man, where can we find you? We've got socials, Facebook. What are we here? Uh, yeah, so Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Michael Chernow all day. Awesome. That's it, just at Michael Chernow. And uh, I'm out there living the life I... Um, Really am excited to be living. 100%. We'll and see. if I can leave you with one thing. I would love this. One thing to remember um, that I've had to constantly remind myself of. There are two kinds of people in the world. There are people that walk into the room and add value and energy. And there are people that walk into the room and suck the value and energy right out. Add value and energy and, uh, and positivity. Because uh, that is how we grow Chana, that is a really good way to finish on. And I'm going to call you a chef entrepreneur. <laughs> My brother, Michael Chernow. I'm going to pull this uh, lasagna out, but I just want to say thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'm blessed to say it's not going to be anywhere near the last time that we get to hang out. <laughs> I'm looking forward to training at the marathon with you and against you and many of the fun times ever. Thank you for having me. Of course, my man. Of course. This is awesome. <laughs> and dude, look at this kitchen. Dude, oh, it's fantastic. fantastic. Well, we've, we'll do some cooking in here. Oh, yeah. right? Many more times. I love your work, Chernow. Always gonna be a bro with you, my man. Guys, today's episode, as always, super awesome and big takeaways. That grit, that determination, I just have so much respect for Chernow for being through that. On a side note, Chernow and I did mention that we're gonna be running the marathon this year. As co-captains, we do have a lofty goal. We want to raise enough money to feed 250,000 New Yorkers. So to learn more about City Harvest and what Chernow and I are raising money for, make sure you hit up cityharvest.org. Uh, you can also hit us up on uh, our personal Instagram where we have links to City Harvest as well. They are a phenomenal organization, not only feeding those in need in New York, but also preventing waste. Two big things that both Chernow and I are massively want to be a part of. So once again, hit up City Harvest if you want to learn more how you can get involved as well.